Hi, I'm Shauna. And I'm Liz. Welcome to Getting Bookish, a weekly podcast where we will talk about different book-related topics, let you know what we're reading, and even answer Q&As from you. Be sure to visit our website, gettingbookish.com, and check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Getting Bookish. If you enjoy our podcast, we'd love for you to subscribe and leave us a rating and review, which helps us to be seen by other book lovers. With all that said, we hope you'll enjoy Getting Bookish with us. Enjoy the podcast. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to put this note in real quick. You are now picking up on our part two of our bookish organization. So you are just jumping right into the second half of our conversation we left off last week. So if you missed that, I would recommend you go back to the podcast and listen to part one, and then you can jump over here to part two. With that, enjoy the rest of the conversation. (laughs) Now we talked about books around the house, but what about organization for preparing to read a book? Do you have a certain way that you start to read a book or materials that you have on hand when you're reading? I do. I, so I think I showed, I think I actually showed the same exact book in our last podcast, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it happens to still be here on my That's desk. Okay. Um, so when I go to read, I take the dust jacket off because <laughs> as you guys have heard me talk about before, the dust jacket makes me cry crazy. So I take the dust jacket off and I always grab a bookmark. And so I actually brought my, I brought my accessories here to show you. So I have this cute little tray that sits on one of my bookshelves. And this is where I put my dust jacket while the books are being read. I also have my reading journal. It's kind of its home. Although to be honest, it's rarely in there. I kind of put it in there to show you that's where it goes. <laughs> it's usually sitting by the side of my bed or it's in my bag or wherever. So I have that for the dust jackets. And then I have this cute little mug that has all my bookmarks in it. I love this the ones one with the feet. I know this is one of my favorites. It's the Quidditch one, but yeah. So I'm kind of a nerd about using bookmarks and kind of collecting bookmarks. Do you choose does- a particular bookmark for a particular book or how do you, how do you choose? Not normally. Sometimes, sometimes I'll just flip through and I'll be like, Oh, I'm in the mood for like this bookmark. Some of the bookmarks like go to a specific book. I don't know what book this goes to, but I got it in a subscription box. (laughs) So like there's a book that this was like the illustration for. And so sometimes they go to something specific. Sometimes they're just from the bookstore that Mm -hmm, I work at from Maggie's books. I have a whole bunch of these and they all have my name written on the back of them because they're for special requests that I made. And when they came in, we put a bookmark in them, (laughs) (laughs) but no, I have I I have a lot of bookmarks and they kind of live in that jar or that <laughs> mug. And I just usually just grab one because it's more important to me to have a bookmark than to have it be the right bookmark. True. I can as, only make so many decisions at a As time. we <laughs> talked about before, it could you could be in a lot of trouble if you're without a bookmark because then you turn yeah. into a corner turner like me. Yeah. Don't be a monster. <laughs> <laughs> now for my books, when I want to be not a monster and not turn the corners at the top of the pages. Just so you guys know, I don't actually think Sean is a monster. This is a joke. (laughs) I love these little ones that, if you can see this, they're these little tiny ones. They're magnets. So you, I know it's the scarecrow from the wizard of Oz. And so they're magnets. So you just put them on a couple pages and they clip there. They're really tiny and they're cute. And there's a whole, I mean, you can get a cast of whatever characters. Here's another one that I got obviously from Harry Potter. And I also have the Alice in Wonderland characters. Now what I do with these, my favorite thing to do with these put it back in my book here is I always keep one for the bookmark obviously and his little face face faces where I am in the book 
but then each set comes with four. What I do with the other three is I put them in the back of the book right here. So there's the other three. That way, if I get to a part in here that I want to reread or I want to write down or I want to share with somebody, I can just pull this little one off and put it up here in the book or off to the side or something. So I always have extra little bookmarks there for, you know, holding a place. That's and brilliant. Yeah, because before I did that, I was like, well, I want to use all of them because they're all so cute. So even if they hang out in the back of the book like this forever and I don't need them, I still at least get to see them and they're cute. I can see their little happy faces. <laughs> I love that idea. I be, Because when, when you review books, you want to, you know, have a quote like you put in or mm -hmm. – like, I want to go back and be like, oh, like, this part was really good. Like, I want to make sure I talk about this when I review. But usually that means that I have to, like, write myself extensive notes. Like, on page 36, mm -hmm. I need to go back and copy down this quote or whatever. That's such an easier way. This is so smart. I'm going to have to get magnetic bookmarks. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Because and... that's such a smart way to keep track. And how easy. Then you don't have to stop reading, which is what I normally do. To find write myself something. notes mm -hmm. yeah I and love it another thing that I do if you want to get even more particular is I always have a bunch of sticky notes everywhere so if I clip something to the page and I might not remember what it is I'm trying to remember from that page I'll do a sticky note and slam it in there and you don't even have to write on the sticky note just put the sticky note under the first line of where you're trying to read and you can even pull off a couple sticky notes and throw them in the back of the book too so you're just pulling one off and putting it where you need to go and I usually do that when I'm reading books like this like this one is simplicity parenting where I'm usually trying to you know remember certain things or share with friends is when I'll do that so maybe not so much like a a novel although I still do put all the magnetic ones in there I also keep with me a pencil, a highlighter, and some type of, where are my highlighters? These I love. These are midliners, but they have great colors. And you can turn it so it's kind of the fatter highlighter or narrow, so you do like an underline or something. I feel like I should be taking notes right and now. So I'm like, <laughs> I need to go get these things so that I can read like this. I love it. I love all your bookish tools. Yeah, and then I... Hang on. So when I read a book, I... Well, when I finish the book, actually. I don't really touch my journal, my this book journal, until I finished it. I put it in here and this is just to check off of my challenge which we went over that in our challenge episode which I believe was episode two so you can yes. see the book or my uh, bullet journal in that one but this one is when I'm done with the book I go into this one and I do title author genre stars and notes so this Ooh. is a little more detailed and I have, because I was using it in my bullet journal, but I felt like I was using up so many pages. So I just do the title in the bullet journal, and then I go into the separate one, and I do an actual kind of summary of my feelings on it. So that's kind of my whole process for reading. <laughs> I love that. And so you do that at the end. You do yes. all of your journaling at the end. Yes. I like that. I usually, so in addition to like taking off the dust jacket and getting my bookmark, I start by writing the title down in my journal. So I will, I was going to open up and to a page that I've only written the title down. Like I will write the title down before I've even started the book. Like okay. it's part of my process. 
process. Yeah. And so then I'll go into like Goodreads and I'll say that I started it. Because the thing that I like about Goodreads is it keeps track of the day you start and the day you end. So you Mm -hmm. can see how long it took you to finish a book. If I don't know, I get real nerdy about the statistics. I do the <laughs> I do put in here when I start and when I finished. I just do it at the end and I just remember when I started it or if I can't remember the exact date, I just guess, but um I could I could at least fill that out like in the beginning to put the start date. I guess I'm afraid that it it'll be a book I don't want to finish and then I have these like half books in there. <laughs> Well, and I have, I mean, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to set a book down <laughs> and say, this is not the book for me. And then I'll, and then I'll write that in there. That's like true. I DNF at page, you know, 102. <laughs> so DNF for anyone who is not familiar means did not finish. It's kind of shorthand that we use. You see that a lot in Goodreads. It'll pop up and someone will say two stars DNF. <laughs> um, they usually give a reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> usually, two stars is probably pretty generous if you aren't going to finish a book. But <laughs> right. <laughs> but they don't really allow you to leave zero stars, so you have to give it something. <laughs> now, with all of these books that we have, what do you do with books after you read them, and you love them? Probably if you love them, you're keeping them. But what do you do after you read a book and you didn't like it, but it's yours? Do you keep it? Do you give it away? What do you do with it? What do you do with these books? Oh, that's such a hard question. I feel like the hoarder in me just wants to keep it forever because it's a book and it's here at my house. Like, I've already found shelf space for it. I might as well keep <laughs> it for the rest of my life. But... <laughs> I just recently started going through some of my books and deciding, all right, I don't need, I don't need this. I, I read this, I didn't enjoy it, or someone gave me this book, but it doesn't interest me, so I'm not going to read it. Those mm-hmm. are the books that I think are the easiest for me to separate myself from. <laughs> sounds so painful it is painful <laughs> um but to be like you know what someone gave me this I'm never gonna read it someone else might enjoy it I'm going to give it away mm-hmm. and so like I do that it's hard it's a challenge when I at the library when we would weed the collection it was so easy for me because I'd be like oh this hasn't checked out in two years mm-hmm no one wants to read this. I'm getting rid of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and But with your own books, like you usually got that book for a specific reason. Right. And it's really hard to give things up. And so I just slowly started going through. I had for a while in my late teens, early 20s, probably into my mid and late 20s, I <laughs> decided that I wanted to like, collect all of these old books they Mm -hmm. aren't important books they aren't antiques they aren't anything special they're just old (laughs) and so I had tons of them and I was like I don't read these I don't these Marie Kondo would be so proud they did not bring me joy (laughs) yeah and so I was like I don't I don't need to keep all of these so I did just go, go through those I went through all my fiction books, but I only got rid of two, so I'm not even (laughs) sure if it counts. I think what makes it hard is even if you're looking through these books and you think, that's not a book I'm going to read, in the back of my mind comes another voice that says, right now. (laughs) You know, because what if in five years my tastes have changed, I like a new genre, and that could be a book that I really enjoy. So I think it's it's hard because you might enjoy it later. I don't know. It's, it's really hard for me to get rid of books. Now, I did just get rid of an entire box of books because I said, I mean, I have nice so job. many. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I was very proud. A box These, is a lot. <laughs> it is. These were books and I sat down and... These were books that I was really interested in a very, very long time ago. Not necessarily a favorite. It's just I read a lot of them. And 
I thought I enjoyed them a lot. I will never read them again. And I don't think I would recommend them. And I have so many more books that I would rather put here. So it was really hard to go through those, but I did. And I feel better because otherwise they were just sitting there staring at me. And I was like, I don't really want you there anymore. <laughs> I talk so, to my books. <laughs> well, good. They're my friends. <laughs> so I have a question for you. You are doing the Unread Shelf Project. Mm -hmm. And the challenge is, like, you have a challenge each month. This is the way I understand it. You have a challenge each month. Mm -hmm. And if you don't complete the challenge or you don't finish the book, you have to, you get, have rid to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Have you had to do that yet? I have not. Yay! I have <laughs> I'm not. curious. I mean, we're only in March or April. Right. Yeah, but I was just... But it, I mean, it's a good... <laughs> I'm, I'm... It sounds so scary. Like, I'm still thinking about it here weeks later right because it sounds so scary to me <laughs> well I'm looking at the challenge right now so for January the challenge was any unread book it was the nightingale so I was good on that February was a book that was gifted to me salt to the sea are, are we seeing a theme here with my world war ii oh and March book that's been on the shelf the longest was night by Ellie Weissel so we're like three for three with my world war ii April is the book I most recently acquired. So we'll have to go over that. And then it goes through, I think I will be fine for this because only because I read so much, except for, um, in October, it says a book that scares me. And it says it could, that could either be from length content or horror. So something like that. So I have to look on my shelf and see. It could be a book that scares me because, you know, Outlander. Because it's such a long. I was very... like, we just talked about some yeah. of these in our confession. And I don't want to get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's on my shelf. <laughs> ah! I also have Outlander on my shelf. I swear, we read. need to buddy read that. We do. We do. <laughs> We've talked about it now. Yeah. <laughs> a couple times. We need to make that happen. Oh, my goodness. So do you have any virtual bookshelves? I do have a Goodreads account. Uh-huh. But I'm terrible with upkeeping it. So that's I... the closest thing I would have. Oh, and I do have an app called Book Buddy. Again, I'm terrible with keeping up with it. So I'm not a very good virtual book shelf recorder <laughs> <laughs> so so today in preparation for us to chat about this tonight I decided I was like oh I'm gonna go in to my Goodreads account and look at my virtual shelves mm -hmm. and I had to laugh because although I absolutely keep up with Goodreads I put every book in there I review them when I'm done I'm very organized about that Probably about three years ago, I decided that I was going to have all of these shelves. And so there are genre shelves and favorite series shelves. And I was super excited about it. And I kept up with it for about a month. And then mm. I've never gone back and added anything. Yeah. And so it was kind of interesting to look at them because I'm like, oh, like I remember reading those books and I read them all fairly close together. But I'm, I'm like now... It would be kind of fun to keep track in there because the books I read aren't always mine. They aren't physically on a bookshelf in my house. Mm -hmm. They're library books or they're borrowed from a friend or they're audio books. And so that would be a nice way to organize things. Oh, yeah. I just don't do it. Or at least I haven't done it yeah. yet. I'm afraid I would do it, like you said, for maybe the first month and would be all in. And then yeah. I wouldn't. But now that you say it like that with different kind of themes or something, I did start a Goodreads shelf because I wasn't thinking about it in that terms, but I did start one for translated books because we had had a conversation before where one of my challenges is to read a translated book. Right. And I, I was thinking, I don't know any translated books, but 
I'm sure I've read them and didn't even know. So now I do have a shelf. I did make one for translated books because Night from Ellie Weissel was translated and the librarian or yeah, the librarian of Auschwitz was translated and another one was translated that I just, now I'm seeing them everywhere. So I'm it's putting amazing. them, yeah, I'm putting them on their own shelf. And I think that that's kind of neat to read those translated books. Yeah. And so I think that that's one of the things that I would like to use more. That's a tool I'd like to use more. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's something I could do annually, like at the end of the year. Categorize them. Categorize them. Yeah. So because if I've been going through and I've already been reviewing them, mm -hmm. then even if I don't remember exactly what they're about, I could reread my own review yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to organize them. But... And that would also be a way if you decided to get rid of some books. If I think the only thing that really pushes me to get rid of books is that I've run out of room. Right. I have a lack of space. <laughs> and so <laughs> now I have to weed through my personal book collection, which is awful. Yeah. I mean, there's just no <laughs> other way to say it. It's not... It's not a fun experience. There are some things I enjoy, like going through my closet and going through my clothes and being like, I don't wear this. I don't wear this. Like, it's so easy for me to clean those things out. Books, I've like grown this attachment to them, right. even if I haven't read them. And, <laughs> and it's very hard. It's a huge challenge to get rid of them. But I think a lot of people run into that where they just don't have the space. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's funny because it reminds me of this picture book that I got for the kids. And I can't remember the name of it. If you're watching on YouTube, I'll put it below. If you're on podcast, we'll add it to the show notes. But it's this book about a family who lives in this little um, motorhome. And it's filled with books. Like the pictures show that there's no space in the entire place. It's just books. You see like faces peering out between books and <laughs> kids standing I want to go live there what right? is this place <laughs> yeah and then the kids are standing on the books to look out the windows and the books are holding up the table and there's just it's just books everywhere and then one day the dad says we need to get rid of all the books and I'm like this is a terrible story and so <laughs> they get rid of all of the books and they say there's more space in the home which means now there's more space between them and so they started doing their own things and not being held together by the books. Aww. So, yeah, so it, I, I thought, okay, I like that. But then one day the little boy brings home a book and the dad's like, where did you get that? I'm like, what, are you offended? I mean, I, I wasn't quite understanding what we're trying to do here. <laughs> and the boy, the boy basically said, it's a library. It's this magic place where all the books live. And so they got a library card or whatever. And now they're reading books again as a family and then it's you know happy ever after it ends with dad reading and all the kids are around him and mom's there but after I end the book I'm still like but why did you get rid of all the books in the first place <laughs> why didn't the books come back <laughs> where are the books now so I get it but I There's was a plot hole <laughs> exactly I couldn't get past the fact that he got rid of all the books I'm like you couldn't even have kept like a couple like he got rid of all the books <laughs> It's very upsetting. <laughs> and Shauna has been scarred by this picture book. <laughs> right. I should have added that to our, our episode last week on books that we did not like. I did not like this because he got rid of all the books. <laughs> <laughs> I do not like this. Oh, my goodness. I can't, I can't imagine not having books. I was just having a conversation today with a man that was in the bookstore, and he was telling me about that he and his wife had read the, the what is it, the, the Art of Tidying Up, the magical something of tidying up the Marie, Marie Kondo. Kondo's book. Yeah. Um, and he had read it, and he's like, yeah, we read that. He's like, but she says that you can only keep 10 books. And, yeah. And he's like, so we just didn't do any of it, yeah. which I thought was just really <laughs> cute. Like, <laughs> that's how I do things. I'm like, oh, well, this one thing I disagree with, so I'm saying no to all of this. <laughs> But um, we were just kind of laughing because I was talking about on her show, which is super adorable. She is absolutely adorable. Mm -hmm. But she's like, 
she's like, no, she's like, if it makes you happy, you get to keep it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I think that when I'm weeding my own collection, thinking about does this book bring me joy? And maybe you can only do five books at a time. Maybe you just pick up five books off the shelf and you're like, okay, these are the five books that I'm going to look at right now and decide Okay, all five of these, they bring me joy. They're going back on the shelf. I'm keeping them all. <laughs> I tried. But... <laughs> I tried. But maybe there's one that you pick up and you're like, no, you know what? I didn't enjoy this. Mm-hmm. I've never recommended it to anyone. I'm not going to loan it out. I'm mm-hmm. not going to read it again. I can pass this along. Sometimes the trick is finding out where to pass it along to. Mm-hmm. But... I'm done with this one now. So mm-hmm. it's a challenge. <laughs> it is. But just don't get rid of all of them. No. No. <laughs> what a terrible children's book. You can't rid of terrible get rid of all the books. <laughs> Hopefully there's more of a moral to the story and it's, we just can't remember. <laughs> all right. Well, we would love to hear how you organize your books and what your strategies are to keep you reading. And so we can post something on our Facebook page so that we can hear about yeah. your ideas. Take some pictures of your bookshelves. Oh, I would and love I want to know, does anyone have success having a rainbow bookshelf? I and would if you love do, that. Like, let me know how you do it because I'm so fascinated by it. <laughs> and I've had zero success. Yeah. So <laughs> show me the pictures. I want to see your bookshelves. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, everyone. We will see you next week with a new episode. Bye. Thanks. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed hanging out with us. Don't forget to check us out on social media and subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any of the fun. See you next week.